Happy Monday. Jackie here at DBA Law. I am actually going to take that off. Uh, because I am in, in, in an enclosed room. However, know that we will be wearing them when anyone comes in to see us. So we have noticed already that there are some difficulties with people hearing us through a mask, um, particularly for people who actually tend to read lips more than they think. So it's a new thing to get used to, but because a lot of my staff live in the Mitchell area, we have to wear them in the office. Um, we have to wear them when we see people. Um, yes, so for those of us in Mitchell, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, but at the moment, I'm in an enclosed space, so I don't need to wear one. Um, but it's our new normal. So uh, today is a follow on from last week. Last week I spoke about um, consumer rights and I spoke about uh, the right to have a reef uh, to repair or the right to replace. Um, today I'm going to talk about the right to refund and I'm going to go a little bit deeper into what a major and a minor failure is. Uh, but essentially in every exchange you have as a consumer, whether it's to buy goods or services, there are built in um, clauses into that arrangement which a, a seller cannot avoid. So they can't avoid that what you're buying is fit for purpose. Um, and if they try to, or they, ca they also can't avoid and say you won't get a refund because in some circumstances, like I'm gonna talk about today, a refund is pretty much the only option. Now, where there is what's called a minor failure, so um, something breaks straight away, for example, um, you're, you're entitled to take it back to the person you bought it from or to contact them if it's an online purchase, and then they decide what they're gonna do. Are they going to repair it for you? Are they going to replace it? Um, or are they just going to give you a refund? So it's the seller's choice to do one of those things when it's a minor failure. It's different though when it's a major failure. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So if you want to go back and learn more about the minor failures and how to get something repaired or replaced, that's last week's video. Um, but today, if you have a major failure, um, the seller doesn't actually get a choice. So essentially, what, well, what is a major failure? Well, a major failure is something that can't be fixed, isn't it? So, um, and that also means can't be fixed by a replacement. So if you just have a faulty item of whatever it is, but in fact that, that item, if it actually worked, was suitable for what you needed, they can just replace it, no issues. Um, so that's only a minor failure. A major failure is where they, the seller for some reason has said that the item will do something that you need it to do and it doesn't do that. So you've bought it thinking it was fit for a purpose and then it's not. Um, and so that then is a major failure. And you can go back to the seller and say, well, it doesn't do what I want it to do. You got to refund, take it back, refund it. Um, or if they refuse to do that, you can actually claim compensation from them, but they should give a refund. It's their obligation to do that. So just quickly, some other major things that um, that qualify as a major failure. So goods that if they were bought by someone who was fully acquainted with what the thing does, they wouldn't have been bought by the person. So again, it's sort of like, well, you thought it was going to be suitable for this particular thing that you wanted it to do. Um, but in fact, it's not. So you weren't fully acquainted with all the um, features and you thought it was going to do what you wanted it to do, but it doesn't. Um, the goods are significantly different from the description, sample or demonstration model. So 
um, particularly buying online, you buy off a description or a photo, and then the thing you get, if, if that's completely different, it's a major failure. Um, and the same thing is if you look at a sample and then order something based on the sample, if it comes and it's completely different from the sample, it's a major failure. So, um, but bear in mind, if you order something online and the only thing that's different is the colour, um, you can just, it's a minor failure and so you'll get a replacement. Major failure doesn't do what the description says it was going to do. The goods are substantially unfit for the normal purpose that they're supposed to be for um, and the unfitness cannot easily, easily be remedied. Goods are substantially unfit for the purpose disclosed by the person selling it. Um, so it's almost like, did they intentionally give you a misdescription or um, did they actually think it was, it doesn't really matter how they ended up selling it to you. Um, if it's unfit, it's unfit. So whether they were consciously selling you something that was unsuitable or whether they actually thought it would be suitable and isn't, doesn't really matter. Um, and then also if the goods are not of, of acceptable quality because they're unsafe. So not because they're low quality, but essentially if they don't meet, for example, um, Australian standards, particularly if you think about anything to do with children um, and the age ranges and swallow risks and all those sorts of things. If it's unsafe, it's a major failure. You can get a refund. So difference between minor and major failures, again, uh, minor failures are something that can be generally fixed or replaced. Um, so if you get a dud version of what you've bought, it's up to the supplier to choose whether they want to repair it or replace it. Or they can actually give you a refund and off you go somewhere else. So it is the seller's choice in that circumstance. When it's a major failure, it's your choice. You go back to them, you say you've got to give me a refund or you can claim compensation. but realistically it's unlikely that you're going to do that because that takes a lot of time and effort um, one way you may be able to do that is going through consumer affairs but consumer affairs are also going to encourage you to um, just seek a refund so there you go that is when you have the right to a refund under consumer law in australia um, so it applies to anything that you are buying um, online, in the supermarket, whatever, okay? All these videos get posted onto our Facebook page. Um, so you can go and have a look under the video section at all the ones that are there. So like I said, last week I focused more on um, minor failures and when you can expect a um, replacement or repair. Lots of other videos there as well. I try and do this every Monday morning, so um, please go back and have a look through if there's um, an issue that you have to see whether I've already done a video on it. Otherwise, by all means, um, direct messages through this Facebook page or um, on our website, which you can find from the Facebook page. All our emails, our personal emails are there as well if you um, wanna reach out um, or if you have a specific question that you actually want me to do a video on. So quite happy to do that as well. Hope everyone's staying safe, comply with your masks. Um, and again, sorry you won't be able to see our faces if you do come in at the moment because those of us living in Mitchell will be wearing these. Take care. Um, and yes, I'll post this video onto the page so you can watch the replay. See you next week.